calling the work session of the Portsmouth City Council, scheduled for February 13th, 2017, to order. And Madam Clerk, would you call the roll, please? Yes, sir. Mr. Cherry? Here. Mr. Clark? Here. Mrs. Lucas Burke? Here. Mr. Moody? Here. Ms. Simmons? Here. Dr. Whitaker? Present. Mayor Rowe? Here. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a need to go into closed session, and before you is a motion. I move to go into closed meeting pursuant to Virginia Code section, subsection 2.2-3711A1. The purpose of discussion, consideration, and interviews with potential candidates for appointments to boards and commissions, and for the purpose of discussion and consideration of performance, discipline, or resignation of specific appointees to boards and commissions. Is it, is it second. second. Okay. Any discussion? Madam Clerk, will you call the roll? Yes, sir. Mr. Cherry? Yes. Mr. Clark? Yes. Mrs. Lucas Burke? Yes. Mr. Moody? Yes. Ms. Simmons? Yes. Dr. Whitaker? Yes. Mayor Rowe? Yes. Thank you. And ladies and gentlemen, if you will leave the room, uh, we're in closed session. We will come back out. All right, we're back in session and uh, call the meeting back to order. And we're at uh, a discussion of the city council retreat outcomes. We, ha we have on the agenda tomorrow evening a resolution that will officially adopt uh, the vision uh, principles, the vision statement, and the guiding principles that city council uh, worked out at the retreat uh, over the two days, Friday uh, the 3rd of February and Saturday the 4th of February. And it was a unanimous uh, decision, um, word by word, on the um, both the vision uh, statement and the guiding principles. The guiding principles are what's going to guide us as we work with each other. And we talked about this becoming the culture for our, our city. Uh, the vision is the vision statement for this council on what it wants to get done over the next two years and beyond. So, um, for those of you that were there at the retreat, would you like to add anything to what we do? Oh, in addition, uh, we've identified four major items that we want to start work on immediately. The first is, uh, and there's no order here, um, but they're all uh, important. Public education, that as a community, we need to say that uh, no more uh, will we w allow our schools to go in a negative direction, that it's important that we come up with a strategic plan to get all 19 schools uh, credited. And this is going to take a community effort. The second is the creation of a council task force on poverty. Uh, and that's going to be a, a task force that will look at the causes, um, the systemic causes, the resources that we have ava available, um, where the gaps are, with the goal of reducing and eliminating poverty. The next is a redo of our zoning ordinance. Mm -hmm. And we agreed to have a called work session with the city council, I mean with the planning commission. And that is this Wednesday uh, evening. And the time for that? Five o'clock. Five o'clock. And the council in, the, in here? Right. Okay. And we'll have a joint meeting with the school board on the 27th. Yes. And you've North already talked to Dr. Bracey about that. that yes. North in addition to... 27th. Uh, 27th or 23rd? 27th is okay. our, our public work session, the last meeting in this month. That will be um, the school board, joint school board, yeah. city council. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 28th is our regular meeting of city council. And then the last big uh, item was uh, the city's uh, image and marketing campaign. We asked, um, well, we decided to do two things. One is to act as a catalyst. Uh, for the creation of a citizens group uh, to foster uh, additional fest uh, events, uh, much like uh, the model of fest events in, in Nauvoo. And we would be the catalyst, not the, the guiding hand. And the second, we asked Dr. I mean, uh, 
yeah, Dr. Patton to bring back a proposal on the reestablishment of a convention and visitors uh, office. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, for those of you that were there, Excuse uh, me, do you want to? I just have a question on the planning commission. You said Wednesday. Yes, sir. Is that Wednesday or Thursday? I thought it's Thursday. 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 This is Thursday. Sixteen. It's Thursday. Sixteen. I had Thursday. the wrong day. Sixteen. I concur. Yep. I'm sorry. Yep. I knew the date was. But I had it's the wrong February sixteenth. So it is Thursday. Five o'clock. Yes. Right. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you for that. Yeah. And the twenty-seventh and twenty-eighth. Um, again, the. Any questions, any comments by the people who are there? Okay, Dr. Patton, you'll have this on the agenda for tomorrow night, the resolution to adopt. Yes, it's already there. It's ready. Okay. Mm -hmm. All righty. Uh, it was a super event. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, we haven't been together since then, and it was a super event. Thank you. Yeah, doc thank All you, Dr. Patton. Um, and, and we should Deborah have White, Dr. Some. Zen White come. Mm -hmm. Do something with us once a quarter. Yeah. yeah. He was really awesome. Right, and the members of council, I, I've shared that you, you, that was your first meeting. The November 2015 um, department head retreat out at uh, Tidewater Community College, Dr. White and his wife, uh, um, Alma White, conducted that. Uh, we returned and had a follow up um, six weeks after that. And he is now continuing to work with the department heads oh, on those great. initiatives from the retreat. And he will be meeting during the month of March, one-on-one -on -one with each of the department heads. I think his work is fantastic. And um, everybody back there shaking their head. Um, because, yeah. Can I speak? Yes, you may. Yes, I mean, um, in my absence, I, I think you all came up with some great uh, vision ideas and it looked like um, it was a lot of uh, thoughtful information that that went into it and um, um, I would say that I wasn't there and I want to say for the record I, I thank you for the prayers and the concerns that everyone had for my husband um, Thursday night he was uh, rushed to Obesity Hospital with multiple blood clots in both lungs mm. and so it was a scary time for me and my husband um, and um, he was in the hospital for five days um, so while I would have loved to been there with you I was where I needed to be um, with yes. my husband. And, um, yeah, you had you know, your priorities yes. right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. right. So thank you for the work that you did um, in my absence. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. I love what you came up with. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mayor, I want to thank the citizens who uh, took their time, and some of them even stayed over, yes. uh, came up to the retreat, sat through uh, uh, both sessions. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I think it was good that uh, they observed the uh, what happened. Uh, there were a lot of neat uh, activities that uh, Zen, he was kind of the uh, instigator uh, of some that uh, uh, were, were quite unusual to say the least. They just were quite, together, though. Quite, a, quite effective. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Dr. Patton, City Treasurer's Report, would you like to introduce this, please? Yes, uh, Mayor, Vice Mayor, members of council, we have our um, City Treasurer here, Mr. Jimmy Williams, who will who will come forward and um, present, answer questions as it pertains to his role as Treasurer and where we are. Okay. Mr. Williams. I need this tall seat right here. Yeah, because that was too low. Mm -hmm. Seat will dangle. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Patton. You're welcome. Mayor Rowe, Vice Mayor Cherry, Councilwoman, Mr. Lucas Burke, Councilman Mr. Booty, Bill Booty, Councilman Simmons, and Mr. Clark, Councilman Dr. Whitaker, and all others gathered. Thank you for the opportunity to come. Uh, as introduced, I am the city treasurer, city of Portsmouth, and I have been since 1994. And basic duties, you all probably know, but it's a collection of all revenues due to the city, disbursement of those funds, safekeeping of those funds, and investment of any and all excess funds. I'd like to introduce Joyce Gardner, who's chief deputy, who has been in the city treasurer's office a couple of years longer than I have. So, uh, Joyce's responsibilities 
as chief deputy treasurer is our cash management function, our banking services. Uh, she is the one that uh, makes the deposits from our local collections. She is also the one that reviews the collections that we receive from various uh, other entities, by various other means. Uh, we have lockbox services with our bank, Wells Fargo. As you know, the taxpayers, <coughs> citizens have the opportunity to make their payments directly to a lockbox, which allows our money to be deposited in the bank on a daily basis, and then it's communicated back to us the next day, and then the following night, with the assistance of the IT department and our audit within our department, the citizens' records are updated on a 24 or 48 hour basis. Uh, as I said, we have the responsibility of collecting all taxes, all revenues. We go well beyond the taxes. Uh, we assist various departments throughout the city in collections. Uh, of course, each department, Parks and Recreation, the golf course, social services, et cetera, they're doing their own collections. We've provided them with tools to assist the citizens. Uh, we have set up uh, credit card operations and debit card operations at each one of these locations, which expedites the payments. And then on a daily basis, they come in through a cash turn-in policy procedure that, of course, we work out with the finance department. And again, that money is processed daily, deposited in the bank daily, records are updated, fund accounting is accomplished, and the records of the city are maintained on a current basis. There are a lot of facets that go into the collection. I won't go into every little detail, but we do assist the uh, Parks and Recreation Department with collections of delinquencies. We assist the Human Resource Department with, the, with delinquencies that they may have on their books from advanced sick pay, to be example. We assist the EMS collections. Uh, we receive those monies as they are collected, but when they become delinquent, we have added those <coughs> accountabilities to the city treasurer's office, and we're staffed to do collections. The state of Virginia, the Commonwealth State Code gives us tools to use to collect delinquencies, legal collection tools that aren't available to the departments that I mentioned. We also, within the last couple, three years, have started taking the uh, public utility payments at our office in Churchland. We have a branch there for the convenience of the citizens and to expedite collections. We have the City Hall office, of course, and when the Public Utilities Department moved to the second floor, we accepted the responsibility of collecting those on a daily basis, and we do that, and those monies are collected, deposited into our city depository account, and the next day, Ms. Gardner transfers those monies back to the Public Utilities Department. So they're receiving those on a current and of course, Public Utilities receives their cash reports the next day and updates their Public Utility records. We assist them when there's distress taken by the Public Utilities Department by accepting those distress payments when people might be late for whatever reason, and those monies are collected, and we notify Public Utilities immediately to uh, clear that account the citizens are responsible for letting them know that. So with that in mind, on a daily basis, as I said, we're collecting all taxes and all other revenues due to the city. We engage quite a few services from our bank, Wells Fargo, that enhance our collections, enhance our management of our cash and our uh, operations that benefits the finance department benefits us. I mentioned that we have uh, services like the lockbox that expedites collections. We have uh, put in fraud protection 
uh, that allows us, and on many occasions, Ms. Gardner and Ms. Kelly's staff, we will find someone has made a nice copy of the city of Portsmouth check and my signature and deposited that. That comes in to us on an exception basis. It's researched by Ms. Gardner and finance and we reject the check. So we don't experience a loss as a result of that. Uh, each check that's written uh, has a positive pay approach that it's recorded and if for some reason, again, someone tries to cash a check that is not written, not passed on to the bank as one that we've issued, it will reject and we will have the opportunity to do that. So we're protecting the money of the city of Portsmouth and the citizens. We're committed to the collection. Uh, we're committed to the services. I only mentioned a few of the services the bank does give us. Uh, in the disbursements, of course, you approve expenses, finance processes, and we review and disperse. We review the, the check register each time it's written because we have a policy within the city and within our office and in cooperation with, with uh, the city manager and finance that we review any and all checks that are being written to businesses or individuals. We research all of our receivable records, see if there is a delinquency. If there's a delinquency of any sort that we have on our delinquent receivable file or on our tax files, we immediately flag that and we divert that. Divert it to the payment of that delinquency, et cetera. We then send a letter to the citizen all the company and advise them we have diverted that dollar to satisfy in full or partially satisfy the debt that they have and the obligation they have to the city. We have that in place. There are jury checks that are written for people to serve jury and I mention this because it sounds small but yet they are written. We audit those against the same receivables as we do the accounts payable. We manage uh, the funds of the city with uh, several checking accounts. We have a main depository account. We have several uh, zero base accounts that we use, control disbursements for payroll, control disbursements for pay, uh, payables. Uh, the public utilities has a, a, their own special I um, mean, has their own depository account. I'm not a signature authority on that, and I mentioned that because later I will show how that comes into play when we go into our investments. But those zero base accounts, which there are not many, there's one account that finance uses for the payment of bond, bond payments that they wire to the bondholders. And that's a separate account, and that's a control for them. Uh, each day, the balances in those accounts are swept and rolled into our main account so that we can invest on a daily basis. We sweep our accounts every day. The measure of our deposits, our cash, and the value of our depository account and our zero base accounts is consolidated and that figure is measured against our first objective or one of our objectives and that's to pay for the services that we are engaged with the bank, the lockbox, the fraud prevention, et cetera, et cetera. That number at this time is $90 million. It's a lot of money. We have an earnings credit on that. Now it's Point four zero. It has been low, and in the past, it's been very low. And as a result, that ninety million just recently, and we evaluate and analyze this on a quarterly basis with the management of Wells, and we've just adjusted in the last couple of months down from one hundred eight million to cover our services to ninety. 
and that's invested overnight. Now, as I said, we have the money in the bank. The next part of the excess funds is working closely, or really, uh, uh, Alice takes care of this, and she's doing a cash flow analysis. We meet periodically on that. She, she is forecasting her cash needs, her expense to, and then expenses that she needs to cover, the daily routine, fixed general operating expenses, salaries, payables, bond payments, et cetera, et cetera. The expenses that y'all know about, and I'm sure you're aware of on a monthly basis. Of course, the budget that has adopted generates those expenses. So the budget gets into the process. The expenses of the city that I've mentioned get into the process and the bond payments, et cetera, et cetera. And based on that forecast, then that allows me to see that on a monthly basis, we're going to need this much money, we're going to have this much expense, we're going to have a net. And I see that on a monthly basis based on what Ms. Kelly gives me. And then from that, I do the investments. The investments right now, because rates have been very low over the uh, several years, Joyce has a handout that she will show you. The process right now I have three month investments, six months investments based on that cash flow, and some one year investments. The one static one year investment is our perpetual care fund for the cemeteries. Your city code says that that balance must be maintained at a million dollars. Uh, I think when I got here in 1994, it was a half a million dollars. So that was built up over the years in the 90s and so forth. And when it hit the million dollars, then any excess money is available to the city manager, to the city council, to expend on perpetual care at the cemeteries. I want to refer to my notes now to say that uh, Look real quick. There's a million twenty-six thousand dollars in that one account. That's not the money that we invested three and six months or a year based on the cash flow analysis. That money's there. So if you choose to use the twenty-six thousand, city code allows that, <coughs> and that will mature in March, and we will again be reinvest in that. It's invested for a year, and I think that it's in invested at 0.70. Is that correct, Joyce? That's correct. If I find my glasses, I'll read it. I mentioned that one because I will also get into the, the portfolio we have for our investments, and I know at your last meeting some of you had some questions on the investments, and I will try to address those. And of course, Mr. Rowe, I assume that we'll have some questions and answers at some yes. point in time, and we will address those. Uh, what I've given you on that first handout, that's the letter that we send to all the banks that we're asking to give us a quote. And of course, the quotes that we're asking for, if you see in that letter, or have to be secured pursuant to the Code of Virginia. And that's listed there. And each one of them assures us of that, and Mr. Gardner has on file a letter from them stating, stating that they are secured and are legitimate uh, investments. The investments we have right now, and I'll show that in a minute, we can, we of course get a lot of certificates of deposit. I know Mr. Moody, I believe you referenced that as a question last time. We can also invest in A1P1 commercial paper, uh, government agencies, et cetera. There's a whole list of things we can get into. 
The stock market went up real good today, but I can't get in there with you with your money. Uh, so we send this letter. The sample we gave here was when we were asking for uh, a quote on the 25 million 57. The 57 is money interest that we earned on previous three or six month investments that we rolled. I spoke to Ms. Kelly. I said, do you need that money? Do I bring it back into the deposit account for you to use? She said, no, I'm fine. We moved forward and reinvested it, and it will be mature in July. So again, that $25,57,000 will is invested for the six months, and that was done on January the 17th, correct? 26. 26, okay. So that letter goes, we get the quotes from multiple banks. All banks do not send us a quote. Uh, a lot. Of, the, the bids and the yields that they're quoting us is based on their need for money. In years past, there hasn't been that need for money. Bill? Uh, Jimmy, a question. Uh, I know interest rates and, and just going by and, and what I usually invest is a little less than $25 million. Or $85 million. Just a little less. <laughs> but but uh, I, I noticed the rates, uh, and I keep up with them, uh, are, are higher than what, what you got here for the amount of money. Are you limited by code to just local banks, or can you, can you invest the money anywhere? The, the local banks are giving me quote on, com just not dancing around the question, but on commercial paper, which could be GE Credit, could be Exxon, could be any with the rating that's required. But our CD rates from the local banks have been better. Again, they're going to quote what they're willing to pay for the money because they're operating on a net interest margin themselves, what they pay for money and what they can invest the money in themselves through their loans, investments, et cetera. Yeah, you say they are lower, but these are the these are the highest quotes we got, and I take one basis point. Do, do you do you go outside of the state? Do you go outside of the I have not. roads? No. You think no. you could get higher rates uh, I can, elsewhere? I, the Wells Fargo assists me greatly uh, in that, looking at the, the total market. Just for an example, back in uh, November, Wells gave me some idea of some rates outside. And, you know, uh, a GE Treasury was 0.55 on commercial paper. I don't, we didn't take any of those because we got a higher local CD rate. Oh, we have some agency monies with DBT, is that correct? Yes. Okay, that's reflected. In other words, that. you're not restricted by state code to going. Uh, as long as they follow this guideline of the state of Virginia and that code, uh, that there are multi security agencies all over the United States that call on us, uh, and I have looked at those, and I get an email with those rates, and they're not quoting me anything on the duration that we we're able to invest right now. And Alice watches these too, I know. The state, Do you have any comment on the that? State, I'm sorry. The sure. state limits you on what your qualified depositories can be. Right. Um, and it does also limit you on what you can invest in. That's right. And so you have to you have to follow the Public Deposit Act. Yeah. And that's what I have. State yeah, code. Yeah. I, I didn't so. quote it, but that's, that is the code. They, they do have a list of, of qualified depositories that you can you can deposit your money in. Now, to yes. invest your money in, you're a little bit... The uh, state maintains that list. Yes. yes. And they, they, so you send, you send you your solicitation out to everybody on that list? Every bank on that list? Mm -hmm. but she's talking about the instruments. No. Uh, I'm, yeah, there's the two different things. There's where you can deposit yeah. your money and where you can invest your money or right. who you can invest your money with. Where you can deposit your money and, and leave it, those are your depository... Um, right. Accounts, and so you have to follow state code on both of those. Dr. Whitaker. So, so the interest that is earned off of the uh, CDs, uh, does that go into the general fund, or is it reinvested? How does that? 
the interest it's actually good. is a revenue and it'll go into the general fund or the public utility. It depends on where the funds are coming from. Okay. So okay. some of these are actually public utility funds. We haven't split them up this year yet. Okay. We do a consolidated request for quotes and that's uh, the next handout. Yes. Is referencing what we currently have invested there, the 85 million uh, point four. And here are the instruments, here are the due dates, and here are the rates. These were the highest rates or yields, Mr. Moody, that we received when we solicited it. As I said, we take the highest basis point that we can get for the duration. I'm not going long because rates have been suppressed over the years. They've, they've been down. There's, we start to see a little bit of flip. I think we had one. Uh, the, the 25 million you see there listed at 124, I think before that was in the 60s, wasn't it? It was lower. It was lower. So, but that bank had the requirement, the need for the money. Every, what the quotes we're getting is based on their need as much as ours. I'm not going out long. We've talked about that, three months, six months. But again, it comes back to that bottom line net on what she's projecting on her cash flow to see when I can go and when I need to bring it. And last time when we brought back in the 25 million, we discussed and we reinvested that. She could have taken that and used it. And you, she can can explain. Do, you can do laddering and that's yes, typically that's what you what do is ladder the the, uh, the terms. Um, that's what I'm doing. And you can go outside the, the local area for investments. I mean, you don't have to necessarily restrict it to local banks. Well, our banks are, are national I think, banks. I think Dr. We Roy, Roy Roy has a question. Oh, I'm sorry. So, so the four investments that we see here, are they broken down as far as public utilities, what is not public utilities, or are they combined? That's combined. So, so when I look at the 25 million figure. Uh, that is combined. It's okay. combined. That's combined. Okay. And so, how do you determine how much goes back to public utilities in The general? accounting department of finance decision when they get the money in. Right. And so what we have to do, we usually take an average daily cash balance of what's in the, in the different funds and apply it to that. Okay. We haven't done so for this year yet. Your question if we may issue. pause just for one second, let's make sure that we get all the questions. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, I'll wrap up because we do this together. It's not a one-man <laughs> show. She, you know, y'all, you have your budget, you have your expenses, you have your your uh, funds, and then based on the available funds, then we again look at the three six months. The last sheet that I've given you is is the uh, prepared by finance, and this is showing you what we have. Received. I mentioned that on a daily basis we are sweeping the available funds after we pay, have the 90 million to cover our services. So this past month, the 90 million target, our analysis revealed we needed 87 million to cover that. So we have a favorable situation that we will accrue throughout the year and then we get with the bank and we evaluate the pluses and minuses based on that target and we settle up or carry forward uh, to the next year. But what this is saying here on the sweep that we have generated the $68,000, that's the money is working. All dollars are working daily. That's the, mm -hmm. that's what I'm trying to point out. We invest the th three months and the six months that you've seen, and then on that we're managing the day-to-day -day functions. Today I think there was five million available to be invested. Two or three days ago, prior to the bond payments and payrolls and et cetera, like that, we had $16 million. But we are sweeping daily and looking <coughs> down the road in the forecast to make the decision on longer term than daily is what my point is on that. So this bottom line, this is what we've earned. These are the CDs and they're forecasting or we're forecasting based on the investments, based on the yields, that the year should end up with $440,000 having been earned 
on all investments, the daily sweep, the CDs, the, the cemetery is not in there because that's sort of a fixed investment. So with that, I know there was a question Alice referred to me. I think, Vice Mayor Chair, you asked about the rainy day fund. I'm, I am not isolating any of those funds or dollars into an investment. They are in the, I'm operating with the cash, and she's forecasting the cash. And as far as the rainy day fund balance, it could be in that $85 million that we have. I would have to leave that sure. to the chief financial officer. And also, excuse me. Go right on. I don't want with that, the rain, I know you asked about that. I know you asked Bill about the CDs. We have both CDs agencies and potential of commercial paper. Yes, sir. sir Dr. When, when you put out the uh, request, uh, I'll call it an RFP for investors, uh, is it pretty competitive? Do you get a, a lot of vendors competing to invest the city's money? Yes, we do. So, if so, what what does the city get back in return when we look at, for example, we have um, $85 million invested. Mm -hmm. So what does the city get back other than interest um, as far as services, job opportunities for our students? I mean, what, are there any type of There's no services that come from our investments. We get the interest. No the sweep, when I talk about the sweep, well, our, our cash balance, our available balances, we have 90 million that we have to keep to pay for all the services I was referencing. And there's a whole list. There's an analysis that come through. Alice and I have had some conversation about eliminating some of those. Or re but we don't get anything back from the bank that we invest with other than the Right. What, what I'm what I'm asking, looking at this, is for example, 85 million dollars, and you you mentioned Miss um, Gardner. Is that yes. You mentioned that it's competitive, which means we could put it in other places. People are competing for it, and so aren't there other services and opportunities we can get other than interest if they're competing? Well, I mean, has that been explored? competing on the rates that they're willing to pay, but they're not competing to give us anything back in return other than the interest on our investments. Have they we, don't offer any other services. Uh, have we ever looked into that as a possibility? I've never known that to be an opportunity for us to ask for any services because we've invested there. Again, as we presented here, they are offered a year. It's competitive. I mean, we may get 1.3, we may get 65 as a thing, based again, as I was earlier referring to, based on their needs. Yes. They, the banks themselves are going to bid on the money that they need, and they know they, they're getting it for three months or six months or whatever. But no, the answer is no, we are not receiving any other services that I don't know of any investment policy that I've seen that would allow us to sure. ask for anything else. Um, I, I guess what we're trying to do is ma make the maximum use of our cash. So we have to put right. it somewhere. So we can put it in the bank or we can put it where it's going to earn the maximum amount of interest that it would, would happen. And so then when you take that, you have you have about $400,000 of interest we're earning. That's what you take to use to provide get services. So the banks really don't provide services except giving us interest. Right. But I was just curious if you could leverage that with other opportunities that... Um, we can surely ask, but I, do, I, I don't I've never known that in any of my opportunities or discussions on the investment policies and so forth that... Yeah. I mean, you, you she said experience follow, elsewhere, so she yeah. Had you, you, know, you do experience. have to follow the, the Commonwealth of Virginia and That's the federal right. laws of how you invest money with public right. monies, and so you're not going to typically else. take money and put it somewhere except for a bank or something. No, that's, 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 qualified. Not, that's not what I'm suggesting. Okay. Uh, we we've been talking about education and other opportunities that uh, we can do to make Portsmouth better, and I'm saying we have, for example, 85 million dollars that you invest in. Of course going to get the interest, and I'm not saying suggesting put it in um, somewhere that would be contrary sure. to the code. Just saying, what what other opportunities could this uh, provide possibly for, um, like I said, example, 
employment opportunities. We have a first college program, uh, student internships, are the are the other things that can be done as I can't to leverage. leverage. That. One, one person at a time, please. I don't. I don't I, I would not feel comfortable trying to leverage that for a request for support of what you're saying. Probably ultimately be I yield to our attorney to bail me out on that one. <laughs> right. Sir, pardon? I think he's finished. No. That basically, I see a lot of paper here. I brought some backup to, if we need to go in any details. The sweep amount is now 0.41. Three, two months ago it was 0.23, and that's again based on a money market rate that the bank <coughs> offers that we can invest in. So that that rate moves around. It's, for the last few weeks it's been pretty consistent, yes. and several months ago it was less. Down. Is that a daily sweep sweep rate? We sweep. Yes. That's the daily. I got a. No, but I mean the rate change can change daily. Change. Yes. I just looked while we were waiting and it was, went down. From 42 to 41. <laughs> so that's a function of the daily money market rate, and there it's offered by the money market institutional rate that we benefit from on a daily basis. So I guess we're not leaving any available cash after we pay for our services and after we've invested the 85 million, we're not leaving any money uninvested on a daily basis. Any further questions? Thank you for coming tonight. Thank you Thank for you. your presentation and thanks for waiting. Uh, Dr. Patton, you want to sum up anything on this? Uh, I'd like to just thank Mr. Williams, and as he indicated, um, Mrs. Um, our CFO is communicating with Mr. Williams almost on a daily basis mm -hmm. and um, keeping apprised of um, where we are with our investments, what our needs are uh, to cover what our expenses are. So I see them as having a, a great working relationship and a close working relationship. I have the accountability to, to seek the investments, and Ms. Kelly and I. Have, she has the accountability to tell me what she needs, mm -hmm. and I bring back the accountability, and we are committed to collecting all revenues due. We have a lot of legal options, and I'll just throw this in. We just had to submit our comp board budget for next year, and our rate on real estate collections is 99%, one year after the due date. Now, we have delinquencies. Delinquencies are a fact of life. Our personal property after one year from the due date is 96%. So we're using any and all tools that we have. Thank you, Mr. Williams. Thank you all. Thank you all for the opportunity. Everybody satisfied? Yes. Let's move to the next item, Dr. Pat. Ms. Simmons. It's not really for him. I just want to follow up on what Dr. Whitaker just said about the banks. That's a great idea. Not for him, I think. Right, that, right. <laughs> but when we get into the, the, this stuff about put, you know drawing our line in the sand about education, mm -hmm. you know you're right. You know every every bank that has a branch in Portsmouth, ought to, we we need to be marching in the door saying, Support how about us. taking a percentage of our high school first college students for summer jobs or whatever. You know that's a yeah, they really I didn't want to lose I mean, that thought. Yeah. It didn't necessarily go here, but... No, I was just curious yeah. if they were doing that, if that yeah. didn't come no, up. We, I don't think they are. Uh -huh. yeah, but, but we can. Right. school board. You yeah. Yeah. The only investment yeah. side, they would yeah. probably yeah. deduct it from yeah. your... Yeah. Right. I agree for me with more interest. Yeah. 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 Yeah
employee compensation presented by Mrs. Elizabeth Gooden, Director of Human Services, Retirement OPEV presented by Ms. Ellis Ke Alice Kelly, Chief Financial Officer, Retirement Capital Projects presented by Mr. Brown Casey, Budget Officer, and Citywide Maintenance presented by Mr. James Wright, City Engineer. Mrs. She's coming. Okay. Yeah. Mrs. Gooden, we'll begin with employee compensation. Good evening, Mayor, Vice Mayor, and members of Council. Um, my presentation tonight will focus on employee compensation and the estimated costs and factors that are under consideration as we develop the fiscal year 2018 budget. As we review and analyze our options for its employees, it's important that we share how we manage compensation. Managing compensation requires that we balance internal and external factors to develop effective compensation for our pay ranges. Internally, we must balance our, our ability to pay with our compensation strategy. Our ability to pay is based on an operational cost, any new revenues after meeting fixed commitments such as debt service, fringe benefits, and retirement cost. Our compensation strategy is to be competitive enough to attract qualified candidates and retain employees who meet performance expectations. Externally, we focus on conditions of the labor market. Currently, employees are experiencing a talent shortage, and some um, surveys state that our shortage is, is the worst talent shortage that we've had since the Great Recession. In addition to public safety, skilled trade positions, such as equipment operators, electricians, along with mental health and social services professionals, are some of the most challenging positions to attract and retain qualified candidates. Turning your attention to public safety, this chart is illustrative of our market position for our entry-level fire and police positions. Once a fire or police recruit completes the academy, they receive an additional, they actually receive an increase in salary. The market average is currently $42,109, and the city is currently $3,829 below the market average. For Suffolk, as you see, I have an asterisk there. Suffolk does not um, hire recruits for their entry-level um, public safety positions. Currently, what they actually do is look for certified police officers. The cost, our estimated cost to increase our public safety ranges, which includes making adjustments to our existing step system, will cost approximately two and a half to three million dollars. Addressing full-time city employees, which includes part-time, temporary, and grant employees, with a 2% general wage increase has an estimated cost of 800,000 to one million dollars. Additionally, a 2.5 um, wage general wage increase has an estimated cost of $1 million to $1.2 million. And a one-time 1,000 net bonus has an estimated cost of $1.6 million to $1.8 million. Please note for that one-time bonus, it includes public safety, whereas for our general wages, it excludes them. It should also be noted that the governor has in his fiscal year 2018 proposed state budget, it includes a 1.5% bonus for state employees. Any questions on this? they ever get their raise, the state, the... No, they have they no, didn't. No, they not yet. That's in the proposed budget for um, 2018. In the box? Is that in that box? Is this brief in our box? Yes. Yes. It can be. Yeah. You don't have a copy. You want a copy of it? He doesn't box. have his. Yeah, it's in the box. It's in the it's box. box. It's in the box. But he doesn't it's have on his thing. The first bullet, general wage, wage increase, that it's includes in utility, employees. It's in the box. I'm sorry, it's Amy. It's oh, yes, it includes box. public utilities. Yes, sir. I just wanted everybody to hear that. Yeah. Uh, uh, general wage increase, the 2%, uh, that includes. Uh, both general fund and utility fund. That is correct. It's across all funds, yes, sir. All right. Well, I think we're ready to go five. Okay. Living wage. A living wage is defined as the minimum income needed for an employee to meet their basic needs and includes food, housing, 
utilities, transportation, health care, child care, in some cases education. A living wage differs from a minimum wage in which that the minimum wage is determined by federal law and can fall below what is necessary to maintain a quality of life and in some instances can leave employees to rely on governmental assistance. We are proposing to address living wage compensation for general wage employees whose salaries actually fall below a $30,000 threshold. While we have not set a living wage in the city of Portsmouth, we currently have approximately 225 employees who make less than $30,000 annually. Of this 225 employees, our lowest salary is $17,794. And the Say that again. The lowest salary is $17,794. And, and how many and people fall in that category? Of the seventeen seven ninety four. Right. Of the 225. Um, Mayor, um, if I had to give you a... If, if you want to get us... Can I get back to you? Ask your question again, Mayor, so we'd be clear on what your question is. What percentage of the 225... Fall in the last, uh, the, the lowest. 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, and over a phase period of time. But here's the, the issue of which Mrs. Um, Gooden and I talked about earlier today. There are people who are with the city, <coughs> tenured, who may be at $31,000, and I've been here for, so okay. if you understand, so it could just... Action. Yeah. It right. would create what you call the, you right. know, the compression, so we were thinking maybe strategically, based upon their years of service, to so, um, so give well, them a flight so just based on then this... this the 300 percent. No, I, I, that, I got that part. But how many people was it based on? So, so you, you said you're not doing all of them. It was going to cost 300, 350 thousand dollars. No, they're not getting to the 30. We're no. What we're not doing. I'm sorry, um, Vice Mayor. What we're not doing with that estimated cost of 300, 350 thousand dollars is moving all the 225 employees identified to that 30 thousand dollar threshold. We were actually looking at a methodology. So, you, so all I'm getting is something, but not to 30. Yeah. That is correct. Some of them who might be. Now let me say this: there may be some who are going to get close to that, but some of the ones like are at 17,794. We're not going to be able to make up that about twelve thousand dollars yeah, um, difference. Everybody, everybody, no. no. Right. Everybody. Uh, yes. Okay. Got that. Okay. Mm -hmm. We got it. Mm -hmm. What do we need. We need this. Some options on how to get there. Yes. And, and you may not know this answer, but what, what, what's, what's the average bump 
for those employees out there? Dollar wise. The seven percent on something. The average? Dollar wise. Dollar wise. Dollar wise. Um, Oh, I'll have to come back to you. I, I might say the average, but yeah, I'm probably going to be about fifteen hundred. We know what the average raise is, is seven percent. No, that's why I'm talking about yeah. actual actual yeah. money. Yeah. So if they made twenty thousand yeah. dollars a year, yeah. they get fourteen hundred dollars. Yes. Yeah, but you got some making twenty nine, some making seventeen. Yeah. Some of the years. So, so between twenty nine and seventeen, there's a there's a. Yeah. There's, there's, there's a little bit of gap, but what we attempted to do. I might want to look at the median. Yeah. Is it about so that way it's the midpoint. Yeah, we, we, just, yeah, yeah, we need more data. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Isn't it, your, um, isn't it your 350 divided by the 225 employees? That'll give you what Councilman Chair is asking. He was saying, what's the average? Um, but you no, actually, actually, because uh, see, they do, they do, they're doing percentage. Seven percent on on seventeen thousand and seven percent on, on twenty-eight thousand yeah, is, is, is a different. Right, point. And that's there correct. Are different points. Everybody yeah. is not. Everybody. So I just wonder what their average was for. for sure, it. we can we can provide that. Bring that back to you, Vice Mayor. And, and give us several different ways to look at it. Average is one. Median is another. So we want to know what the midpoint is. Okay. So on these two twenty-five. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Well, it, on the whole thing. This well, whole I'm saying, but on <coughs> sure. This, right. This with these these employees. Right. Employees of all the mode. Mm -hmm. okay. I didn't think it was tenure too. We had in yeah. there. Yes, we had tenure, tenure in there too. But it was mm -hmm. one year is different than the the yes. eight years. Yes. Exactly. The goal was again. And that would help us too with the compaction mm -hmm. question. Right. So when we do the distribution, that will include um, where they are as far as their salaries relative to their tenure, and we'll be able to show you in ranges, so you'll be able to see basically where like they a fall. Just scattergram or something. Yes, a scatter plot. Yes. 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 Mm -hmm. okay. so, so are you, let me just make sure, that last bullet point, are you saying for the 225 employees who fall below $30,000, if you give them on average a 7% increase, it's going to be between 300000 and three fifty. Yes, sir. That's yeah. how much it would cost. Yeah. yeah. So but not everybody gets the 30000 right. and that's the concern. Right. Yeah, based right. on 10, ten years. Is it, the average tenure for this group again is it's about five years. Okay. All right. We didn't change. We didn't go to the question and answer, but she's she's okay. had her question. Yes. <laughs> 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 okay. Is everybody good? Any more assignments from from that? Mrs. Kelly will come forward. Um, Council on um, FY18 um, retirement systems. So before we leave a little bit, so if they're going to be a strategy presented for moving the uh, wages up to a living wage, I know sure, over time. We it, asked for that. I mean, it's, it's going to show how many years it's going to take to get those salaries up to. For these 225. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And she kind of said that. that, that she's going to give us alternatives for that. they give you different options. I'll show you, like you said, what you're looking for, your distribution based upon the ranges the, to include the tenure, and we'll provide different options to, so you'll have some different ways to analyze and make a decision. Yeah. Well, my question then is what's going to be in place to keep us from having to revisit? Because once you satisfy these 225, sure. what's oh, going to, yeah, well, where, where are we going to put our salaries so that they're that's what we, at living that's wage? That's what I, I see it. We, you this have to restructure the pay plan. Then. Yes, mm -hmm. it's, it's a process. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Ms. Bell. All good questions, sure. please, mm -hmm. you and gentlemen. Yes. Good. Mayor Rowe, Vice Mayor Chair and City Council. As we speak of employee compensation, another large fixed cost for the city and city council budget decisions are retirement and OPEB. As you know, the city funds three retirement systems, the two city systems and VRS. The city's actuarially determined contribution, which is the amount recommended to be budgeted and paid each year for FY18 is just over $8 million for the police and fire and the supplemental system for the city. This ADC, the actuarially determined contribution, is calculated by actuaries and has risen from $7.6 million in 2017 to a little over $8 million in 2018. 7.6. 7.6 was in 2017. The auditors have agreed that the city has no pattern of COLAs, cost of living increases, so the calculation assumes no regular COLAs, and that's why our, our number is at 8 million. The VRS amount is based on actual payroll 
multiplied by 10.2 percent. This is a two-year rate that is established by VRS actuaries, and the city has to sign off every two years that we will pay the 10.2 percent. Another um, uh, another thing to look at when we look at retirement is that we also are paying almost $11 million in pension bonds for our retirement system. And part of the reason why we're doing that is in the past we might not have funded, at the time it was called ARC, Annual Required Contribution, we might not have fu funded our ARC properly. And so it's very important to make sure that when we look at these numbers we see what these numbers are and try to fund them. So when the proposed FY 2018 budget is submitted for council's deliberation, any proposals for salaries and or payments to retirees will also include the impact it'll have on the retirement budget amounts as the actuarially determined contribution is affected by the salaries and retirement benefit and any decisions we make on that. So as we talk about living wage and increasing salaries, it does determine there's some factors here and um, we need just to look at those. Other post-employment benefits. This is another significant liability that the city incurs. For the city, these benefits are the medical and dental payments paid to retirees for employees that have served over 25 years with the city. Many cities use a pay-as-you-go method for funding the actual cost for OPEB benefits, but government accounting standards are now recommending funding OPEB future liabilities in a trust fund similar to how retirement trust funds work. And GASB, the Government Accounting Standard Board, is changing where you have to report your liability on the space of your financial statements in the next years. So, say the last part, you got to report you. Okay. This year and next year, well, next year we will. Next year we will have to put our liability, our OPEB liability on our financial statements. That's gonna, so that's going to? That's going to make our liabilities look go, bigger. Go, yes. Go way up. And so one of the things that helps increase or decrease your liabilities is funding your OPEB through a trust. So what, so what do you think that's going to do to uh, thing, ratings and all that for us? Uh, the Right now, the liability is in a footnote of the financial statement, so rating agencies look at that. So it's not really going to affect. Um, what do, will affect it is pay as you go versus funding the ARC, which will be now called ADC. So it's, it gets complicated very quickly. But, is, but everybody's in the same boat. I'm sorry? Everybody is in the same boat. GASBY applies. Yes, GASBY applies across the board. So, and so yeah, there's but, new but, but, there was new standards for retirement. For us, is uh, our liabilities are already higher than most people. Exactly. Well, so, and I think, let me, let me go through here. So OPEB, um, in the past, um, it shows the recent history of our unfunded liabilities and our ARCs. So in 2014, we had $167 million unfunded liability in OPEB. And that um, was changed because we reduced the benefits to cover only health care for retirees that had served over 25 years, not 10 years. And like most localities, we eliminated the health care for retirees that were post-65. And so you could see our unfunded liability went from almost $168 million down to about $29, $30 million in FY17. And the same thing would happen is our annual required contribution went from $15 million to $2.3 million. We're not funding that 2.3 million, we're just paying the actual cost, which when you look at the 15 million, the city contributions were 3.5, and I don't have the exact number for the FY17, but it's close to $1.5 million. The bond rating agencies are very much concerned about that far left column. Right. Your effort to, to fund to, to fund ADC. It. Right. Ms. Kelly. Ms. Kelly. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. What was that point you were making about shifting to the trust, the impact that would have on the financial statement? That's my next slide, so oh, let okay. me get to that. Man. All right. Man. 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 Hold, hold on. Go, sure. go back to the other slide because... I think that's an important... Okay. The the savings there, you, and I think you touched on it, was that we, we got the retirees to move out of our health care system right. uh, to, right. to a private system. Right. And, and to do that, uh, it we, we set the HRA 
but we were going to pay them for okay. the additional expense of that. Sure. And, and, so, and I, I want to make sure that's not forgotten. I, I know the actuary is, is it's like a one-way street sometimes. Mm -hmm. they, they talk about reoccurring expenses, but those savings aren't just one time. That Those savings are, are reoccurring as well. Sure. Mm -hmm. You're right. Well, most localities did that. Most localities did move their post-65 off of... I, I, there. Re I realize but that most localities did not give a $1,400. So let me go through the slides and talk about okay. the trust first and how this all impacts. So we went from 167 right. to $29, $30 million liability. Our annual required contribution went down, but we weren't funding the annual required contribution, we were just doing our costs. So in order to reduce these numbers, either you can reduce benefits, or you can also reduce ben you can reduce your unfunded liability in your ARC by placing money in a trust. Mm -hmm. And it's an irrevocable trust. And right now the city has three million dollars in our health care uh, insurance and OPEB fund that we can take and reserve in the OPEB trust without any impact to the budget. It's a three million dollar fund balance that's sitting there. There's various options for a trust fund. We can put money into a large pool. Most localities and school boards in the Commonwealth of Virginia have done that with VML VACO. There's $800 million in those trust funds, and it's governed by a board of directors, typically the director of finance or the uh, CFO from different localities or school boards. You also, there's a, also a national public agency retirement system trust. And the city of Portsmouth, because we have our own retirement system, can also create a 401H trust within our retirement system to fund a trust. So there's, there's different options there. So the impact of an OPEB trust, if we have a $29 million, and this one you need to read right, left to right, you have a $29 million unfunded liability. If we put $3 million in a trust, that liability goes down by $1.3 million. If we put the $3 million plus our ARC, $2.3 million, it goes down to almost by, almost by $4.4 million. So it goes from $29 million to $25. Our annual required contribution is at $2.8 million, and it would go down to $2.5 million if we put $5 million in a trust. The schools. The school system has already established a trust. They created an OPEST trust with Wells Fargo in 2008. Yeah, we remember that. We remember that. <laughs> so in this, they, um, in FY12, they funded $7 million, and their ARC was at $1 million at that time. And then this amount is very unusual because most of the time people just fund their ARC, not pre-fund a whole lot of money into an OPEP. And so right now, the OPEP trust fund has pre-funded over $5 million in their trust account in, in Wells Fargo. And so this is sitting on an, as an asset on their financial statements, where typically OPEP is a liability on your financial statements. So during the FY 2018 budget, we're going to be exploring how we can recommend to the city council about funding our ARC for the 2018 budget. And with the financial constraints that we have, we are recommending that we work together with the schools to maximize the use of that trust fund asset that the schools has and minimize the required OPEB funding that we need to do. One option is that that $5 million trust be the basis of the city's OPEB contribution and thereby save funds for other budgetary needs. The HRA impact, and I think you brought this up, Mr. Councilman Moody. In 2015, we implemented a health care reimbursement arrangement, and the contributions at this time did not op impact the OPEB unfunded liability or the ARC, as City Council at the time approved a five-year step-down plan last year. Uh, when Council I'm sorry? established the 1400, there was no step-down. It was to be considered on a year-to-year -year basis. Exactly. It was. That's right, year-to-year. So year. The and, and then last year, the council uh, talked about having a five-year step down. So when we dealt that. with the actuary and we said, do you have a recurring expense, it was, no, we had a step-down plan at that time. So now, because we don't have a step-down plan, they, we do have to talk with the actuaries and tell them, no, we have <coughs> something that's recurring. 
And so that will impact into our OPEB calculations. Right. I think it's important to know that any any council can whack that down to zero. Right. All it takes is four votes sure. to that's do right. that. That's right. Sure. And so I would argue that um, that's not really something that you carry on your balance sheet per se um, because uh, Council could take a vote tonight to whack it to, sure. to zip. With retirement, when you do colas and cost of living increases, if auditors see that council continuously does a cost of living increase and there's a pattern, they will say it's a pattern and they will require your actuaries to keep it as a pattern. So the $1,400, if we do it one year, two year, three year, four, as, as soon as it starts to become a pattern, they need you, they want you to include that as part of your expense. What, what, what's so, the definition of a pattern? And that's what you have to determine. It's, it's, there's, there's no, typically it's five years. And typically it's, it's we, you, you're doing something for five we're, years or we're four not at years. That level yet. We're in the third. No, but there, as you get to that level, I wanted to show the impact sure. of it. Sure. And so if you continue to fund this at $1,400, your liability will increase 4.5 million, 4.9 million, excuse me. And your ARC increases 268,000. So there is an impact as a if there's a pattern to it. If there's when a the, pattern. If, yeah. if and when there's if a pattern. If-then relationship. I'm sorry? It's a if-then right. relationship. Exactly. We're not there yet. We're not there yet. But it can get there. And so that was just something to consider right. as part of um, um, as we do these benefits. There are implications to how we go about and make patterns and cost of livings and benefits. Thank you. Okay. Uh, next, um, members of council, we will have capital projects presented by Mr. Brown Casey, budget officer. Mayor Cherry, City Council. Uh, tonight I'll be presenting an overview of ongoing and new CIP requests. The Capital Improvement Program is a five-year program that addresses the procurement and construction of capital assets, as well as ongoing city infrastructure needs through replenishment and replacement projects. The CIP's first year is the only appropriated year and subsequent years provide a plan for addressing future infrastructure needs and projected expenditures and resources. CIP is programmed into nine specific program areas that encompass every component of the capital improvement program. The program areas are consistent with standard GFOA practices and are similar to cities and counties throughout the Commonwealth of Virginia. The CIP team utilizes benchmarked evaluation criteria to prioritize and recommend the five-year capital improvement plan. The CIP team meets weekly to evaluate existing and new project requests. We also identify appropriate funding sources and operational budget impacts. The team consists of the city manager, executive staff, the chief financial officer, and various operational department heads. Capital planning is critical to water, sewer, transportation, sanitation, and other essential public services. It is also an important component of a community's economic development program and strategic plan. The CIP development team reviews and examines existing and future capital projects, which must align with city council vision principles and financial policies. A properly prepared capital plan is essential to the future financial health of an organization and continued delivery of services to our citizens. Multi-year capital plans ensure effective management of capital assets. Listed above are ongoing projects within the city. First is the Victory Boulevard Paradise Creek Bridge Replacement Project. 
This bridge was built in 1944 and carries Victory Boulevard over Paradise Creek and serves as a main entrance to the Norfolk Naval Station, or shipyard, excuse me. This funding of the design process is necessary for the replacement of the bridge. The Midtown Corridor Project will enhance the revitalization and redevelopment of the Midtown Turnpike area. The first phase of the seawall along Crawford Bay is complete. The second and third phases of the seawall replacement are underway. This funding request is for the replacement of the third phase and completion of the fourth phase. Sewer pump station improvements are ongoing, routine rehabilitation of the city sanitary sewer pump stations. <coughs> there are six pump stations that are planned for upgrade in FY 2018. Drainage facilities and lake management address a number of services, most notably cave-in repairs, cleaning and lining of drain pipes, localized flooding projects, replacement of failing infrastructure, lake management, and water quality monitoring, to name a few. The utility meter replacement program provides for the systematic replacement of all residential and commercial water meters with an automated meter reading system. The Cavalier Manor project includes the replacement slash renovation of outdoor athletic amenities such as fencing, parking, and field renovation. I'll defer to Dr. Patton on school bus replacement. Mayor, Vice Mayor, members of City Council. In 2014, the council um, determined that they would provide uh, in the 2014-15 budget a $1 million upfront amount in the budget for school bus replacement. However, in the correspondence that we found as it related to the $1 million, it was based upon um, the million being put up front. But when the state provided the schools with the SOQ funding for transportation, then the um, difference money would be returned, or no, the money that they received for that year will be returned over to, um, uh, over to back over to uh, city government. Mm -hmm. In 2016, the schools received $658,500. In 2016, the schools received, in addition to our million, $658,500. And in 2014, they received the same amount, which meant that for buses with the state SOQ and the city given the million, they actually had $1.6 million for transportation, which included buses. In our discussions with um, our um, school's budget team, they indicated that they were not aware of the one million and then that they were to return the uh, SOQ funds to the city. Uh, when asked, well, what happened to the 658000 each year you received it, um, the response was it was just used for other kinds of programs. But we never could get an answer uh, as it relates to that. I think it's important that when we um, are aware of such occurrences, and I do have the documents um, as it pertained and spoke to, the SOQ funds returning. Um, the difference with that, if they want it to remain at a million, getting the 658, then the city's contribution would have been 341 something thousand dollars and not a million each year. So that is something that in this, this 18 process and in our meetings that will be coming up with the schools, um, joint meetings, that will be something that would come up for so, discussion. So there's 1.8 uh, that, that wasn't returned to the city? No. We, you, you up front um, each year, in, and including last year, we put up a million, million. for school buses. Right. The purchase of school buses. Right. But through the SOQ dollars that the schools receive from the state, for transportation, which are their buses, they've received six hundred and fifty-eight thousand mm -hmm. plus dollars each year. For each year. Mm -hmm. For each year, from fourteen, fifteen, years. sixteen, right. right? And they'll probably project it for that amount in seventeen. Mm -hmm. 
So that's why I'm saying with our million up front, this coming behind once they get their budget, that would be 1.6 million, our million and their 600,000. That was for buses. But we haven't gotten an explanation what it's happens to the $658,000 yeah, so. for those three years. So that's okay. something we'll bring up for discussion. Yeah, one point so. nine. <coughs> Million dollars. Mm -hmm. All right, we're we're uh, we, we we will bring that up. I'm just calling to your attention. In addition, is Dr. Bracy going to uh, provide that information? We've asked it for it. We've mm -hmm. discussed it. Mm -hmm. um, also, I want to call to your attention that the state does not um, have a mandate of when a school bus is to be taken out of um, operation. Uh, coming on board, my first year I was told. <coughs> that a bus could only be on the road for 15 years. We've researched it. The state does not tell the school jurisdiction that's determined by the maintenance of the bus, the whatever on the bus and whatever. So we were operating on the premise that at 15, you gotta come out and get 10 more. So that is not the case, okay? Thank you, Dr. Patton. <clears throat> Next, um, Churchland High School's HVAC system evaluation is complete. Design of the recommended repairs and replacement has started. The roofs for the schools listed are in various states of design. And understand these um, roofs that are listed in the last um, part of this frame are um, secured through um, QZAB funding. And those, as we have said, they've got to be done. We've gotten and gone forward with the funding. So they are on tap. Sure. Now we will highlight the FY 2018 CIP preliminary new requests. The Ballard Avenue Hyman Street project will improve the existing roadway and drainage infrastructure while also improving Hyman Street crossing the CSX Railroad. This project also includes an access road to Elmhurst Lane. The Burton Point Road construction project includes reconstruction of Burton's Point from the Elm Avenue intersection south to the industrial businesses, improving safety and drainage. The new roadway will also provide pedestrian accommodations. The applications for the Ballard and Burton's Point projects for VDOT revenue sharing have been submitted. Signal upgrades phase five entails continued upgrades to the traffic signal network, which includes new pole and mast arms, new controllers, signal cabinets, new fiber runs, intersection upgrades, and pedestrian enhancements. This project is 100% reimbursable from federal and state funds. The emergency command E911 vehicle is a self-propelled self-contained command and communication center. This vehicle would be dual purpose, a command control vehicle and an emergency backup E911 center for the city of Portsmouth. The new SWAT team delivery truck will be equipped with certified medical supplies, storage cabinets, reinforced weapons safety storage, um, ATF certified light and sound device, and various storage cabinets to hold supplies not kept in individual officers' vehicles. You know, while, while we speaking of equipment there, do we have any plans to, uh, uh, for our public safety to use drones? Drones. Not something that, nothing has come up in that discussion, but that, that is something we can ask that question. So I, I could see the potential uh, for the use of those to save lives. Uh -huh. You know, keep officers out of uh, danger. Way. Yes, mm -hmm. yeah. that has not come up in any as discussion. Well as but they are, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. using them across. I remember in Dallas, yeah. uh, it was a drone that dealt with that um, situation they were in. No, that wasn't a drone. That was a robot. robot. Yeah, a robot, a robot but a, robot. a high. We right. know what you meant. That's right. Okay, excuse me. On, on the ground drone. <laughs> right. <laughs> it did. It, it served its purpose. And, and they have asked for that in their operating budget. In though. their the operating robot. budget. Not the drone. No, the, the, the robot. robot. Not oh, the, the Right. Okay. We definitely will bring that back and ask that question. There's a tactical question. The chief's uh, take no. on that. Right. Yeah. All right. Portsmouth Public Schools is requesting funding for a modification to a, add a 100 space parking lot at Churchland Academy. These are the schools. These requests. are the schools, their new requests. On the Churchland High School stage, 
sound and lighting renovation project will modernize the stage and the auditorium. The Hodges Manor Elementary School roof HVAC replacement project will replace the roof and 36 HVAC rooftop units. The Wilson High School cooling tower replacement project will replace and relocate the HVAC system at the school. Next, Ms. Kelly will discuss economic development and information technology CIP projects. Good evening. As part of the CIP, we've also tried to uh, look be innovative and we are trying to um, develop a project called Strategic Economic Development Fund and we'll request funding for economic initiatives, including items like readying or acquiring parcels for sale, developing public venues to spur or enhance private developments, or to potentially re re relocate city operations for future developments. Another economic development, the new port side, is being placed in the preliminary CIP for funding of a 5,000 square pavilion and associated site improvements. This will help draw people downtown by utilizing the waterfront space for fun events. And the city also has numerous IT projects. The first one is a multi-phase project to install citywide fiber that will in turn reduce city operating costs and provide a potential revenue source and is also an economic development driver. Other required IT projects include the replacement of our election system software and the replacement of some outdated human services document imaging. Now, Mayor and members of council, something that you do not see uh, and um, it has been mentioned is a I'll yield to you. No, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. You finish. I'll yield to you. No, no, go ahead, go ahead, finish. Okay, finish. go with me. I'm, I got him. Okay, is a, <laughs> is a, a Truxton fire station. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I'm just putting that mm -hmm. out there because there has been some discussion. Mm -hmm. In um, talking with staff, uh, they indicated that that has been a discussion, but there has been no. Um, design or you know you you it's not something that you're going to put in a CIP and tomorrow we will build it it mm -hmm. has to be a process mm -hmm. so if in fact council would like to have that in there to begin to look at the process it will take it you know you got to find the site all of that mm -hmm. I'm just putting that out and if that is your direction and then you got another 60 70 uh, however many firefighters that go with it. Mm -hmm. I, I think mean, it it's needs to over be on a year the in the process, yeah. but it should be on the list. Right. right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This, you, you raised the question, what is the consensus to direct uh, Dr. Patton mm -hmm. to put it in as far as you can push it? Right. Okay. Is yes. that agreeable with yes. everyone? Yes. Okay. yes. Was yes. I reading minds? Um, yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. I, I, know, I know it's far out, but I, you said I remember. You started. Right. But originally, I know originally the plan was, and this was some years ago, that the property at the corner of Portsmouth and Elm Avenue was evidently traded with property with school systems at Portsmouth Deep Creek. That's where the fire station was supposed to go. So I didn't know if that land was still available. Is that the old trucks in school? Yes. What mm -hmm. they did was they traded it to build the new school, Brighton Elementary. They swapped properties. And years ago, there was a sign at, at that property that said future home of the fire mm -hmm. station that never came to fruition. Let's, let's leave it to the city manager sure. to, mm -hmm. and the fire chief to come back with. Yeah. Okay. But we we need to put it in the plan. All right. Move it. Yes. The, uh, I think I sent. Uh, well, uh, uh, he, he was, was next. Yeah. Yes, sir. I will yield. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Nate done stepped on me already. <laughs> and I'm sorry. And I had promised him the deck. Yes, sorry. And, and I was caught between both of you <laughs> up in Wakefield. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you were, which li literally. <laughs> Perilous position. <laughs> My question was you said that election software, is that, is that, what, that what was demonstrated to us by Ms. Short in her office? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So, so anticipation. Elections are important to some of us. So, <laughs> I think everybody. <laughs> so, 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 <laughs> so um, 18, what, what are we looking at? 
uh, how much it would be cost about? No, I know the cost, but the cost. about time how, frame. Five hundred thousand. No, 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 I know the cost. The time frame in eighteen. You said eighteen. Yeah. You put in the FY eighteen. FY eighteen to fund the whole thing. Yeah, fund the whole the whole thing. I, I, I'm sorry, I wasn't able to make that demo. Oh, so she might have been able to tell you the time frame of. of I think they said 2020. Yeah, I, I know. I know when she has to have it. Right. right. But, but I'm saying, would, would it would it be in place for when? 18 or 19? Yes. Is that um, right now? We have it in 18, and as we are presenting this to you, you know, we're not. This is not the proposed budget yet. So this is the ideas that we have, and we're getting feedback of what you might want to also see. Um, tomorrow we'll be doing a little bit about how much capacity we have. Um, to fund all these projects, which I think that's an important part yeah, of it that's too. Reality. Yeah, yeah, the reality I, yeah, is, that, that, that's and one, so, that's and so that's one of those projects that may be able to switch back and forth depending on where we can fund it. Well, that, my concern was you don't you don't want to be, be testing that kind of equipment in a presidential sure. election year. Yeah. So, so so you so you you would want to do it. You know, in a, an election that's like 18 as sure. opposed as Not opposed 20. to a which 20. is part of the reason of funding it point. the next fiscal year. Yeah. But it, it it does have yeah. a little bit of flexibility. Yeah. So exactly. so 18 versus 20. That's that's why I was going. That's, right. that's what we're proposing. Yeah. Good point, Bill. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Excellent. Point. All right. I think we just have one more. Thank you, Mr. Ryan. Did we answer Mr. Moody's question? We did. Uh, uh, Mayor, the last. Met, um, Bill, did you get all your? Yeah, the, the, these weren't big things, but I, I forwarded a couple uh, uh, requests, and I think I shared them with council. One was for the Craddock uh, Little League lighting, mm -hmm, yeah. and the other was Churchland, some uh, infrastructure at one of their ball fields. Right, and I responded, and yeah. I uh, sent it to all of council right. saying um, what we are asking the um, Parks and Recreation Director to do is to look at um, um, recreation, outdoor recreation, particularly ball fields, infrastructure needs, so we can come back and say here are the areas of which there are um, outdoor lighting. And I shared with the staff this morning that whatever has, that was done at um, St. Julian's Creek and Craddock was done when I was Director of Parks and Recreation, which oh, was yeah. many years ago. So we will have that. They are working and we will be bringing that back. Thanks. Would, would you communicate or have the appropriate person communicate with the people who brought this? I, 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 yeah, I did. With the citizen? Yes, I would. Okay. I would Thank follow you. with them tomorrow. The, one more thing on the uh, Paradise Creek Bridge, since that's a major route to the uh, shipyard, do you think there's any available grants that they could offset the cost? He can speak to that. For all of our city projects with respect to transportation, we're always looking for other sources of funding other than city funds. So any federal programs, any other types of money out there, we're always making continuous applications. So. Uh, when I met with the Secretary of Transportation uh, a couple of weeks ago and the governor, he, he brought this up and he implied that they're looking for money. What's the prospect for this project? What's the prospect for that? And I thought that was pretty neat that they would zero in on that bridge, which I, I agree with Bill. It's, it's critical. It's a, on a major arterial, arterial street to uh, absolutely yeah to a major bridge that I haven't heard particularly from the state yes. sir that I haven't heard particularly from the state there are some yeah, funds see. available rela with relation to facilities that support military installations and so we're okay. that's the avenue we're looking at currently and we have already some money for that yes, bridge all right so we already have some money for Parada the bridge how much do we have right now you know just under a million. Right. And so just the total cost. I mean, uh, right, right around nine million. Right nine well, million. Well, uh -oh. But so we nine. we, as Mr. Wright said, with all of these projects looking at both <coughs> st state and federal funding that we can go for in order to fund some of these projects, particular road projects. Yeah, but uh, th this one does ha have uh, military implications. Uh, you know, it's a major arterial route to the shipyard. Right, right. So, so I, I would think there may be something there. I don't know. But we're looking for it. Worth asking. Right. Okay. Good evening, Mayor, Vice Mayor, members of the City Council. The city team this year is for uh, citywide maintenance is focused mainly on city buildings. Um, similar to other infrastructure, municipal buildings should be inspected on a routine schedule 
to observe and document conditions or issues that may require preventative maintenance so that large capital projects can be strategically planned. City staff are responsible for the maintenance of over 70 municipal buildings. In FY 2017, city staff implemented a new process to evaluate critical systems in municipal buildings to include, but not limited to, structural components such as exterior walls and foundations, roofs, HVAC, elevators, and life safety systems. This is a coordinated effort with city staff and on-call consultants who are committed to this annual process. We are able to strategically identify citywide maintenance needs and costs in the FY 2018 budget and beyond going forward. This will impact capital improvement program requests for renovations to various buildings, replacement of HVAC, roof replacement, and other CIP lines dedicated to municipal facilities. What we're seeing here, Mayor and members of council, is that staff has started to look at what the needs are in the, um, as, it re as it pertains to <coughs> municipal buildings. In this FY18 um, budget coming forward, there are not going to be a lot of requests because they are continuing to determine exactly what those needs are. So what are you looking at? Are you looking at life cycles? We are going into the each city building and looking at those components that I just mentioned. Um, this past fiscal year, we've looked at a uh, certain percentage, I think four roofs, uh, nine buildings with all the HVAC, all the HVAC systems, um, nine buildings for there were, there was something else. And so we're doing a percentage every year. We're trying to get through all these assessments and within the next five to six years, so up until we now, continue to build. So up to now, we, we don't have a life cycle for this? Not in this manner now. No. So That's these are deferred work. maintenance issues? Yes. Yes, yes. definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Okay. Okay. All right, Here. thank you, Mr. Wright. Questions? I have some more. All right. Go okay. Ahead, Dr. Thank Patton. you. Um, the presentations that you've heard tonight, members of council, are a snapshot of the budget strategies as our budget team continues to review, <coughs> reflect, refocus, and restore the key components that will establish the FY 2018 budget. We'll continue this process until all seven of the FY 2018 <coughs> budget strategies are presented to city council during the public during a public work session. On tomorrow night, we will come with two additional, which will make you have um, have follow up on six with us completing tomorrow night. Tomorrow night, we'll come back with debt service and financial policies. In addition, you have given us some directions on things you want us to come back with information as it pertains to the four areas that were presented tonight. With that said, there at our last meeting, there were three uh, request that came forward uh, that I'd like to report on tonight. Number one, City Council, you will have before you tomorrow night a CMR for your approval um, for the 1,007 active retirees to receive a one-time siphon of $500 net in their March retirement check issued by John Hancock. You requested it's in yeah. the notes. We've Thank got you. that in there. Okay. Mm -hmm. The second, members of City Council, you discussed during our last meeting the health reimbursement account, HRA, for the 297 participants. As you were made aware, in January 2017, in fact, January 1st, participants received the 1,050 toward their HRA contributions from directions given to us by the last council. To answer the question of how much it will cost to restore the FY 2017 budget, the additional amount to represent a full <coughs> 1400 for the 279, uh, it will take an additional $104,000. If it is your pleasure to increase this amount to the 1400 uh, IS city manager needs your concurrence, and I don't have to um, do any um, CMRs, anything, because we already have the line <coughs> item and we have the funding, and so we can just go on and do that. But it's right, your let's, concurrence let's to do a quick move forward. Poll, Elizabeth. Yes. 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 Yes.
During the January 24th work session, Councilman um, Dr. Mark Witter requested a vacancy report on the number of positions that have been vacant for at least a year. Uh, this memorandum, which you receive, is to address the request. Last year, the average, um, on average, there were 215 total vacancies, or 11.3% of 1,899 of, uh, for the city, for all employees except constitutional and appointed positions. Um, by position classification, the non-public safety positions, um, there are 163 Average vacant positions are 13.6 percent of 1,289 positions. We backed out of we backed out the public safety. For public safety, there are 53 positions vacant, or 8.6 percent of 610 positions. Vacancy budget savings are used to cover the cost of overtime and temporary labor um, needed to perform critical work. Um, so, um, and, and um, it was um, Councilman Nate Clark who asked um, for the information on the um, public safety, so I included it in this you memorandum. Don't have yes, out. yes. Does that include the amounts that those vacancies represent? We don't in the have that, uh, the, the actual dollar amount there because, um, as uh, speaking with both finance and HR, that fluctuates, but we can get you an average estimated amount. Yeah. We can do that. Yeah. Okay. Um, the other, yes. Oh, you're good. No, I was going to say, there was a question in regard to our employees who worked um, Snowstorm so, yeah. Helena. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And everyone who worked overtime for Snowstorm Helena was paid. We have a P, uh, um, CMR where you are going to be appropriating the $285,000. So everybody who worked that have been paid. Okay. Okay. That, in, that concludes questions? my report. The only question I have is, which I know it's not tonight, but yeah. as far as the public safety positions, can we get a breakdown of police, fire, and communications? Yes, so um, we know each I can, department. I'll, I'll get it for you and I can tell you mm -hmm. off the right, top of my okay head. With that? Uh, yeah. Fire, it's 31. Oh, well, you got it right there. In my head. <laughs> and police, it's 32. 31 yeah, and 32. 32. No. Fire. Fire is 21 and police 21. is 32. 21, not 31. Uh -huh. 21. 21 and 32, which totals the 53. But um, are the, we have the dispatches in there. The dispatches. Dispatches is 10. Dispatches 10. I didn't have that. And that's on top of the 32. That's right. Okay. Okay. Does that answer your question? Yes. Right. Any this other questions? Okay. This concludes my report right. for tonight. This meeting is adjourned, and we'll see everybody tomorrow night. Tomorrow night. My question is.